is Lecture 10D on cycloids. In this lecture, we'll derive and solve the equations for the cycloid for arc length and area beneath the curve, and then we'll discuss some of the physical properties of the cycloid itself. I've said that the cycloid, epicycloid, and hypocycloid were examples of parametric equations, but what is a parameter? The parameter is a central angle theta from one of the circles. Some books will use T for the parameter, but they really mean that central angle. They do not mean the time, the time that's taken for the circles to move. So we're looking at the central angle. For the cycloid, there's only one moving circle, and so we take the central angle from the moving circle. In this slide, I'm going to derive the equations for the cycloid from the physical picture of the construction of the cycloid. So what we're looking for are the values of x and y associated with this particular curve here, the red line, which is generated by the pencil, p, as it moves. So we want the coordinate pairs of p, the xy values of p, the location of the pencil. So let's look first at x. So we want the x value for the pencil that's right here. So in terms of this picture, this distance x is the distance from, let me change color, from 0 to t, and t is a point of contact between, between the circle and the line, minus the distance from p to q. Okay. So what is o to t? Remember the circle has been in contact and has moved without dragging or slipping as it rolls along the, the straight line. So in a sense it's just sort of peeling away from the straight line. Every point of that circle was in uh, in contact with some point of the straight line as a circle rolled. Right. So this distance O to T is the same as the arc length shown in yellow here. It is the same. You can kind of get a, uh, a picture of that in your mind that the circle was in contact and just rolled away from it so that arc length is equal to the distance O T. So I'm going to replace, I'm going to replace O T get a green color here, OT with, with R theta. Okay, so here's the R theta right here. Now PQ, using the central angle, you can see this is a right triangle, and PQ is a radius times the sine of theta. So now we have an expression for X. X equals R theta minus R sine theta. X is now in terms of the parameter theta. We're going to do the same thing for Y, but first I'll erase the screen. So I want y. Looking at this picture, I can see that the distance y is the distance from the center of the circle to the point of contact t minus the distance from the center of the circle to q. Right. From c to t is just the radius r. So here's the radius r. q to c is r times the cosine of theta. So now we have an expression for y in terms of the parameter theta. These are equations for the cycloid in which the pencil is located on the rim of the moving circle. In general, the equations for the cycloid are given here. x equals r theta minus a sine theta, and y is r minus a cosine theta. a is the distance from the center of the circle to the location of the pencil. So for a cycloid, the pencil is located right on the rim of the circle, so A is equal to R. For that curtate cycloid, A was less than R because the pencil was located somewhere back here. And for the prolate cycloid, A was greater than R because the pencil was located, uh, sort of extended, whoops, get the right kind of pencil, it's extended out here and located way out here somewhere. So the distance from the center out to the pencil is greater than R for the prolate, less than R for the curtate, but equal to R for the cycloid. We're only going to be concerned with the cycloid here, but I want to show you what the equations look like in general. Of course, one of the reasons we like to study the cycloid is because we have closed form solutions for arc length and surface area, and also for the area beneath the curve parametric equations in general, oh, actually for equations in general, we do not have closed form solutions for those quantities. So let's find first the arc length. 
Here's the arc length function in general for any parameter, but we're going to, well, using theta as a parameter here. Right. It's the integral from 0 to theta, theta being an arbitrary value of the parameter, times the, uh, the square root of the derivative of x squared plus the derivative of y squared. I'm using ta beneath the um, integral sign because that's our dummy variable of integration and it cannot be the same as one of the limits. Since I use theta in a limit, I cannot use theta under the integral sign. We need the derivatives of x and y, so I've taken them right here. Hmm. The derivative of x with respect to theta is r minus r cosine theta. The derivative of y with respect to theta is r times the sine of theta. And now we're going to simplify the integrand. Let's start first with just the derivative of x squared plus the derivative of y squared. And you remember we had r times the sine of theta and r times the cosine of theta when we square them. Of course, we end up with cosine squared plus sine squared terms, and the, that equals 1 by the Pythagorean theorem. So we get a, um, a much more condensed expression than we started with. 2r squared times the quantity 1 minus cosine theta. And remember, the square root is going to be taken of these terms. So we would like to simplify it further, and we can do that by using the half angle formula. It's right here. And in this case, we're going to substitute for 1 minus cosine theta, we're going to substitute 2 times the sine squared of theta over 2. All right. So the 2 multiplies the 2 in front of the r squared. We end up with this expression, which is easy to take the square root of, and we end up with 2 r sine theta over 2, and that will be the integrand for the problem. So here we have the arc length function equals the integral from 0 to theta of 2 r sine ta over 2 d ta. Again, changing variable under the integral sign so that we do not use the same dummy vari variable of integration as we have for the limit. This is easy to integrate, of course, and we end up with this closed form solution. Now if we let the wheel, or the circle, make one complete turn, so theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, then we have this result for the arc length of a cycloid. The arc length of the cycloid created by one turn of the moving wheel is 8 times the radius of the circle. We also get a closed form expression for the area between the cycloid and the x-axis. Again, we're going to use one turn of the wheel, so we're going to integrate from 0 to 2 pi, and in terms of a parameter, the area under the parametric curve is y, which is the height of the, um, of the curve above the x-axis, and then from this change of variable we get dx by d theta, that derivative again, and we integrate with respect to theta. I can use theta here because I do not have theta in the limits of integration. We know why. We take that derivative, we ended up with actually exactly the same thing. So here's the expression for the area under the curve. This can be integrated. The answer is 3 pi r squared. That is the area beneath the cycloid, where r, again, is the radius of the moving circle. The cycloid curve has some interesting physical properties. And what I'm showing here, the cycloid has been generated, of course, by letting the circle roll along the straight line. Then the cycloid curve is taken and sort of cut and turned upside down and placed in this position here. In this case, it is the red curve right here. And what's being demonstrated in this picture is the brachistochrone property of the cycloid. And this, this property is that the curve of fastest descent, so we're going to start up here, actually within the square box. Actually, I hate putting zero I like putting 0 on the ground. I would put 0 here and 100 up here. But that's my preference, 0. And this would be 100. OK, so you're starting, say, at 100 feet. And you want to design the uh, a curve for a surface you can slide down that will get you down to the bottom of this, uh, 100 feet out, so you're in a box. You want to get down to the bottom, down to ground level, as fast as possible. You might think, well, you just fall down here, fall down 100 feet, and then get up and run over here. And that's slower. You might think of a circular arc. Here's the circular arc. The time they're showing here for this particular case is 3.27 seconds. You might 
say, well, I'm just going to stretch a string and slide down it, or like sliding down a flat board, the time of descent there is 3.54 seconds. It turns out that the fastest descent is along a shape, um, a shape of a cycloid. picture in, in the lower part here shows another property of the cycloid. Again, this black curve was a cycloid. It was generated by the rolling circle, but then the cycloid is turned upside down and placed in this picture. In this property, it means that they're of equal time to descend. See this yellow one here, the green ball? Say you put these balls right here along the cycloid, and you let them go they would all get to the bottom of the curve at exactly the same time. And I can show you some animations for that uh, in the next slide. This is a little animation. So all these little dots start all up at the top. One is descending along a, like a guy wire stretched out from the top down to the bottom here, the top of, say, some pole down to the ground. The red is your cycloid, and then the other um, would be falling and then running over. Of course, this doesn't prove anything, it just demonstrates what we're talking about, that the cycloid would win. Is this ever used? There's some um, like hands-on science museums that have these kind of curves that, that you can slide down. There's also another place, let me show you that right now. Some of you might recognize this. I used to have one of these in my backyard that my boys built. Um, a skateboard ramp. What is the curve of fastest ascent? It is the cycloid. I don't know if there's had a cycloid shape, but we did have a skateboard ramp. Now let's look at the other uh, property of the cycloid. In this picture from Wikipedia, we're seeing a demonstration of the still picture that I had in the uh, two slides ago. So now all these little objects the blue, red, green, and yellow are stretched out along the cycloid and let go, and it turns out they all end up at the bottom of the cycloid at exactly the same time. And that's a totochrone property of the cycloid.